Hello and welcome to this Broken Arrow video. So in the live stream that I played uh, yesterday, which was the launch day, I uh, lost connection to the server. And that seems to still be happening, that's a shame. But I made a division for the, uh, the VDV. It's a bit odd in Broken Arrow if you're coming in from Wargame. You basically, your division is two divisions. <laughs> you can be the VDV and the Armoured at once, which is a bit odd. Because it, it lets you bring your T-14 armatas with your T-90s and your airdrops. You can airdrop people out of the uh, the prisoner of war transports. Um, although this one's armed, so it can be shot down. And if you watch the live streams, I tried it a couple of times, and uh, a great many men didn't make it. A great many men did not make it. So uh, so yeah, you can you can airdrop people. Uh, let's go through the tabs one by one. If you want the full deck build thing, I guess you could find it in the live stream, but it does take a long time. So, how do I get the full edit? Right. So you can bring recon tanks in the recon tank tab. And let's just go through the stats here. So you've got health on your units. You've got optics, which is like recon power. You've got stealth. I'm coming at this from a Warno perspective, so if you've not seen Warno, uh, this game is, is loosely based off the games by Eugen Systems, because it's made by ex-Eugen Systems devs who sued the company and left because they claimed that they were not being paid fairly for their, their work. So there's a lot of bad blood between these two companies, and they've basically gone ahead and made uh, the game that they wanted to make, that they couldn't make while they were at Eugen. So you'll see a lot of comparisons to Warno and Wargame and Steel Division, and I think that's fair. I think that's fair, because as much as people like to say that these are two completely different games, uh, I think that these guys did this on purpose. They made something similar on purpose, because that's what they knew from working on Wargame and Steel Division. That's what they knew how to make, and that's what they wanted to make, except with their own creative design decisions. So... Recon tanks in the recon tank tab. You don't see that in Warno. Uh, we talked about recon power. There is stealth, uh, and that seems to be a multiplier off off um, one. So I think if you're one stealth, that's as unstealthy as you can get. I'm trying to find something that's one. But yeah, this is 1.25, and a regular T90 in the tank tab would be... Skipping around a bit here. One. So the recon tanks do... Ha so, so this is the worst stealth in the game, I believe, is one. Unless there's... yeah. So one means visible, and then 1.25 means slightly less visible, right? Slightly more stealth. And so the T90M Razvedchik, uh, which is T90 with a GoPro on the top. <laughs> that is... Um, three times twice as expensive uh, and it's got slightly more stealth presumably because of this camouflage netting there although i think the massive gopro might give it away so just getting in getting in on this um tells you about the different weapon types right and there are different ammunition types in this game like steel division not like war game not like warno there are different ammo types and um yeah, it tells you the penetration, so that usually they come with, like, several... Yeah, so this is the, the APF SDS, and it's got a, a penetration of 90 millimeters. But I don't understand wh why it would be 450 and why it would sometimes be 90... Uh, sorry, 900. Maybe that's the distance to the target. I believe it would be, yeah, because the heat has 850 millimeters pen but it doesn't change, whereas this changes. You would expect a kinetic penetrator to do more damage the closer you get to the target, because you are essentially relying on the the kinetic mass, the force, right? Uh, which is, you know, mass times acceleration <laughs> uh, of this thing slamming into the tank. And so the closer you are, the faster it's going to be traveling because the less time air has had to slow it down, and therefore the more damage it's going to do. You've also got the HE, and the, because that's just an explosive warhead, doesn't get better the closer you get to the target. The way heat works is that it's high explosive, anti-tank, so it's usually some sort of um, shaped charge warhead that it hits the tank and then blows into it, 
And so that's not going to change depending on how fast it's going, really, because you're not relying on the kinetic penetration of that round. You're relying on the explosive power once it hits the tank. The way APF SDS works is essentially it's a... Um, might actually just be better if I draw this. Might be better if I just draw this. Uh, so this is our epic drawing. <laughs> um, so imagine that this is your penetrator. Uh, this is your, your round, right? And you've got um, propellant at the back. Uh, this is the, the boom that when, it, when you shoot, it goes boom, right? And that makes it go out of the tank barrel. Propellant. Let's make that a bit smaller. I hope you're learning something, because in Warno there are no ammo types, so you don't actually need to know this. Propellant, right? And then in here, you've usually got, although, you know, newer designs might be a bit better than this, you have uh, a shaped charge, and then a tungsten penetrator, or depleted uranium if you're British. Just want to mess up some fields in Ukraine with your, with your tungsten penetrator. And that usually sticks out the end, and that's why the round looks like looks like this, right? And the APF SDS stands for um, Armor Penetrating uh, Fin Discarding Sabo. So what do all those words mean? <laughs> armor Penetrating, you got that. Fin Discarding. Right? This thing actually has flights on it. Like, you know, like an arrow. And that's what you see here. That's this bit. So it's actually like an arrow. It's got flights on it. I wonder if is there a triangle thing. There is, but it's... Hmm. Is there a better triangle thing? I guess this could work. Yeah, there we go. Let's make it the same size as the other one, so you can't tell. So it's got fins on it like an arrow. You know, like a like a medieval arrow. Obviously, they still make them today. And why does it have the fins on it? Because the projectile is not rifled. It's not spinning round like a rifled bullet. So it has to have the flights on it. And the 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 flights get discarded off the penetrator. And that's why it's called fin discarding because the flights will disappear, right? So what happens? So you've got your penetrator, right? And this is all uh, explodey. And this is, so this is the shaped charge. Uh, and sabo just means shoe in French. So I'm not sure why that's called that. But this, this round was actually invented by the British in World War II. They just named it after a French thing. I don't know why. So, yeah. You've got your, your penetrator. Once we start colouring it in, it's going to start looking a bit more professional. This is a... You know, I'm I'm the best Warno player. I was the best Warno player in the world. Right. This is your APF SDS. APF SDS. So, your propellant, that's used up when it's shot out of the tank gun. Pew. That's what the big bang sound is. And then this flies to the tank, gets to the tank, and then this shaped charge goes off, and that pushes this dart... It pushes this dart this way into the tank, right? And this this dart is made out of tungsten or depleted uranium uh, because it's it's got to be very, very hard and very dense because that's going to punch through the tank's armor. So the tank's armor is going to be here. Uh, <laughs> and it'll probably be slanted a bit, but we're not going to bother with that. So this is the, this is the enemy tank, right? And, um, you know, it's, cut, it's green camo, <laughs> lime green camo. And then that will punch this dart through into the tank. And when it punches into the tank, it, um, it explodes into a million little pieces. This is why the depleted uranium ones aren't very nice. Because they, they shatter into about 10,000 little pieces of depleted uranium. And they end up in the water supply. They end up in the food. They end up in the fields. You can never get rid of all of them. Just a steady, low dose of alpha radiation uh, poisoning the earth for thousands of years to come. And so yeah, it shatters into millions of little pieces and they go all over the place and they will uh, they will hit the crew, right? <laughs> the crew will have a bad time with all these little bits of metal flying around inside the tank. So this is... Um, 
this is, uh, you know, the sad man inside the tank, and he's red because he's uh, dead. <laughs> And yeah, he's having a he's having a really bad time. Uh, we need the curved icon there. He's not having a great time. So like, comment, and subscribe. Oh wait, yeah, we actually have to finish the deck. <laughs> so those are the different ammo types. <laughs> and um, and you can also change the guns on the top. So the cod is like a HMG, or you can just have a PKT, which is like a medium machine gun. It's difficult to compare between them because it constantly resets the UI when you do that. So that's a, a problem that I hope they'll fix. It's not a big problem, but it is a problem. But yeah, so the cord is set, um, it's like 50, uh, slightly bigger than a 50 cal round. Slightly bigger than a 50 cal. There's a reason for that as well. And that's that NATO, during the Cold War, decided that they were going to make all their APCs, like the FV-432 and the M113, um, they were going to make them by standard um impervious to 50 cal and the russians knew this so they just made their 50 cal slightly bigger so that this will go through an fv432 this will go through an m113a3 um so that's why the 50 this is slightly bigger than 50 cal <laughs> um but anyway it's better than a pkt uh because it shoots further it has more damage um it has more suppressive power has more penetration so there you go. And the optics package, you can choose whether or not to bring your GoPro on your tank. So there's the GoPro. And if I choose base optics, it'll cost 30 points less. Right? But I'll lose the GoPro. But I want this, for, and, and you see that my recon power is going down. But I want this to be a recon tank. That's why I'm getting it. So I want the GoPro. And for the sake of five points, I think the cord's very worth it. <laughs> for five points, you know. When you think about that... It's like uh, 2%, less than 2% of the unit's cost. I'm adding to that there for this card, so I think it's worth it. Next one, VDV Resvedka. So you can choose the transport for these guys, and you can airdrop the transport. So that's very important, but only if it's not up armored. So you see that you can pay 5 points for armor, and you can be amphibious, you can get smoke. But if I use base armor... I can then airdrop it. So that was my mistake, and that is now fixed. And so this can actually be dropped out of a uh, out of a, a plane. But when you try and drop the Razvedka, they won't drop inside this. They will just drop from the air. You'd have to drop this separately. Uh, so that can be a bit odd. And that's why I can bring four Razvedka. Can I bring five? No. Uh, if I get rid of one of these, I can bring five. So I'm bringing five Razvedka, but only two transports, because the the transport system in this game is dynamic, so it will not um, uh, it will not uh, basically, if you've bought a transport for one unit and you try and spawn another unit, you can use the same transport. So if you've bought like one helicopter transport and that transport has returned to the base, right? If You can only have one on the field if you've only brought one. But if you return it to the base, you can use it to drop off another group of guys. So even though I haven't selected helo transport for these guys, because I've selected it for something else, I could bring these in their helo transport if they're not using it. So that's a good feature. Squad loadout. You can, um, you can choose to be a suppressed squad. Put suppressors on everything. Or you can choose to be a loud squad. And you see that the um, the sniper changes from an SVD to a SVU silenced. And you see the suppressors appear on all the guys. So that's cool. Can't do that in Warner. One thing that I don't like about this game, could be improved, is that if I bring the VDV Razvedka as loud, I cannot bring another set of VDV Razvedka as, um, as suppressed. I can't do that. So... All of my VDV Razvedka for this game will be either suppressed or loud. I cannot bring another set of them as the other loadout. And it's the same with the tank. Uh, oops. There we go. It's the same with the tank. So if I bring one with the cord and the optonic mast, the GoPro on the top, I cannot bring 
another one without those things. It's one or the other. Even if I drop this to one and, you know. Um, it's just the way it is. You can bring just recce jeeps. So I, I bring those. Oh, that's interesting. You can put an ATGM on them. That actually makes them way more useful. Oh, but then I go over my total point spent. So I could lower this by one. But I actually did need a lot of these last game. Because your infantry dies really fast. Um... Because, yeah, this is like a recon ATGM vehicle, which is powerful. So we'll get rid of one of these drones. This is just... We'll get to that. And then I can have the ATGMs on these. This is a drone with uh, JDAMs on it. Cab 50, which is the... Um, it's like a, a cheap JDAM. So it's classed as a, a laser-guided bomb in this. I think they're just glide bombs in real life, but it's fair enough. Vicar ATGMs you can put on it so it can shoot. Um, so you can customize the pylons on everything, right? So you can shoot ATGMs from your drone. Uh, you can have a bit of both if you want. You can change it for a Carnet, which is cheaper. It's not as good. Deals a bit more damage. Actually, what? That's weird. Oh, the Carnet's way, way, way slower. Okay. But I'm going to try just the cabs. Um, because it's got top attack, right? You would assume so. So I'm just going to try four cabs, and I've got the upgraded optics on it. And then this is just a little scout drone, and you can put weapons on it if you want. That's not really why I want it. <laughs> I want it to scout, because <laughs> there's no recon helicopters in this, at least not yet. And so, sort of need those. So yeah, they're a drone. What have we learned so far? <laughs> Man, this is going to take ages. We're already 17 minutes in. Whoops. Um, what have we, uh, what have we learnt so far? There are multiple, you can have multiple specialities in a division, which means that I can be an airborne division and a tank division. You can have recon tanks in the recon tab. You can share transports across vehicle, uh, across people. You can upgrade and downgrade your units, but if you upgrade or downgrade one of the units, you can't bring another one with different upgrades. You can set your pylons on your... Uh, there are drones in the game. You can set your pylons, and we also learn about uh, how APF SDS works. So this is big knowledge, big knowledge so far, and, uh, you know, if you enjoy this, you should subscribe, because... Oh, no, no, uh, I'll do the rest of the deck review later. The servers are working, the servers are working. <laughs> Get me in, let me in! Let me use. Um, so it's 5v5 and uh, you just wait for somebody to join man servers are finally working so yeah uh, that, that was the deck review we'll cover the rest of it in a different video or maybe I'll come back and do it later oh no nobody's joining I have to go back to the play tab join please tell me they're Russians I can't join any lobbies. It's so Jova. Ruskies only? Yeah, yeah, I'm Russian. I mean, I'm Russian. I can't join any of the... Yes, yes, I'm in. I'm in, and I'm Russian. Zrasvitya? Why did he just change it to American? It's called Russians only. Oh, my God. How do I chat? Russians, please. He just keeps changing it. This guy's had it, man. I'm not waiting around for that. Why would you make a lobby called Russians only? And then not... <laughs> but as you can see, the UI is all messed up. I've now got, like, the lobby screen on top of the normal screen. And it's not really working properly. There are a lot of problems right now with this game. But, yeah, I'm gonna make my own... And then I can't change my deck because it's it's not updating on the UI. And then it's kicked me back out. And now we're back in. Yeah. The game's made in Unity. And when somebody pointed that out to me, all the technical problems started making a lot of sense. So now I can't change my deck. I'm just going to relaunch the game. 
I'm leaving this in because not only can I not be bothered to edit it out, but also, um... Yeah, I'm just gonna have to restart my game. It's just it's fried. But also, just to give you an idea of what we're putting up with here, <laughs> it is a playtest. It is a beta. And when they say it's a beta, it's not a marketing beta. It is a beta beta. <laughs> it's definitely a beta. And yeah, you saw the Unity logo there. So ugh, in terms of performance, the performance isn't great. And it's not going to get that much better because they made it in Unity. Uh, that guy's got a very long neck. Multiplayer. And now I'm back to reconnecting. I almost got to play as well, but that guy was changed in the lobby and I balked. I should have just... Um... Well, I tried to chat to him, but the chat doesn't work. Right, back to making that deck. Uh, so we did the recon tab. Next is the infantry tab. So I need to get into the big screen. So VDV Dush, and you can compare units. So we can compare VDV Dush to, for example, Motor Strauchy. So the VDV are cheaper, but they bring fewer men. Um, what else is different? They've got the VDV have more armor on their guys, but their HP is less because they bring fewer men, I guess. Stealth is the same, speed is the same, and the unit weight is less because there are fewer guys, so it can be carried in more transports. Crucially, the VDV can be dropped out of the plane. That's very important. But you see the loadouts, right? So the the Motor Strauchy, they get two grenade launchers. So there are grenade launchers in this game. It tells you what they do. It can be sort of used against vehicles. They've got a little bit of pen. Four RPGs. It tells you what the munition is. PKP times two. Two PKPs. AK-12s. Which are the newest ones. AK-74s. You know. Just comparing the two stats almost identical it's interesting that the ak-74 has less dispersion than the ak-12 which is newer and the effective range is less it's 400 meters but there's no range scaling in this game so when it says 400 meters it actually looks like 400 meters unlike in warner it says 1200 meters and it looks like 400 meters because warner has got like a 2.6 times range scaling which means that because you can sort of tell distances right from you know being outside i don't know how often you do that um but in Warno, it'll tell you, it'll quite happily tell you that it's a thousand meters and expect you to believe it when it's obviously not. This game doesn't have that. The scaling's realistic. So that means that even though it says 400 meters, the engagement distance feels more or less the same as Warno's <laughs> engagement distance. And of course, the, the LMG shoots a bit further. This is a tandem warhead. We could talk about tandem warheads if you want. Basically, um,. Talk about tandem warheads now. So, there's this thing on tanks called ERA. Uh, or, or you can have slats or whatever. So, this is, this is our tandem warhead. And basically, you got the propellant at the back again. And then you've got uh, Explode E1, <laughs> yellow. And then you've got Explodey 2, which we'll put in orange. Or maybe this front one's Explodey 1. And the back one's Explodey 2. So you've got your pro propellant. And you've got, um, you know... Boom 1. And you've got Boom 2. And at the back, you've got... Uh, propellant. So the propellant is what shoots it out of the RPG. The guy with the Adidas tracksuit, nothing left to lose. He's shooting this at the Macava tank. But the Macava tank has something on it called a cope cage. Uh, which um, everybody flamed the Russians when they did it. And I didn't see the same complaints when all the Israeli Macava started rolling into uh, Gaza with, um, with the same things on them. But anyway, let's pretend that somehow this... This uh, Adidas tracksuit enthusiast has managed to get above the tank, even though all the buildings have been leveled in this, in this town. And um, and so, yeah, so he's above the tank. This is the tank. 
Uh, the macabres look a bit weird, so bear with me. So this is the, this is the tank, and we'll just draw it as a, a box because I can't <laughs> somehow too much. My skill, I'm just starting enough skill. And it's got a big turret on the top. Turret's pointing down because there's some children on the ground that it's got to shoot at. Um, and yeah, so there we go. So this is the the cope cage, right? And this has um, this has loads of slats. Let's check is the server back up? No, it's not. Server still barked. Um, that's a shame. Actually, I took some time off work to play this. <laughs> <laughs> I went. To, it was broken when I went to sleep, but when I came back, it was broken. Anyway, it's got slats on it, right? So the idea is that this thing shoots, and the first, the first boom, hits the slats. Can I fill this in? I can. The first boom hits the slats, and the second one keeps going, and that hits the main armor, and then that, that is a kill. There's an alternative. There is an alternative. Uh, oops. And this is called a tandem charge. Tandem heat warhead. And it's called heat stands for high explosive anti tank. You'll get used to it, guys. You'll get used to it. <laughs> uh, it really doesn't want to be black. There we go. So there is an alternative use chip. Uh, Hi, uh, explosive anti tank. If you need these infographics, leave a comment in the description and I'll send you the infographic. Um, I've done it again. Quick server check. Nope, still reconnecting. So there's a secondary case, and that's there's something called ERA on tanks. So you imagine, and the Macava also has this. <laughs> this is a good good explanation. Sadly, no Macavas in game. So this is the front of the tank, and um, you know that this is the turret, and that's uh, that's aiming way off in the distance at some guy on a paraglider. And um, but on the front of the tank, do you see these like Lego bricks? You could probably find some in game. You could probably find some in game. Uh, get rid of this so I can save it, and then back to tank tab that doesn't have any on that doesn't have any on that doesn't have any on what? what's going on that doesn't have any on uh i'm really struggling here ah here we go here we go do you see those lego bricks on the turret those lego bricks right that's sort of stick out and they're sort of on the turret this is what we call explosive reactive armor. It's not Darth Vader off Spaceballs. I know what you're thinking. It's not Darth Vader off Spaceballs. Um, but yeah, so this is explosive reactive armor, ERA. And the way this works is you got these Lego bricks on the front of the tank. And inside this is an explosive. It's got another shaped charge in it. You know, this the shaped charge like this. These parts, ex these parts explode and push this into the machine. Um, it's the same shit. So, it's got a shaped charge. Um, shaped charge brick thing inside it, and you know, so those are the explodies. So, first boom comes in, right? And it tries to, it tries to boom on the tank, it tries to boom on the tank, but the shape charge counter booms it. So he's trying to, it's trying to get into the tank to kill all the people inside. It's not a very nice projectile. It wants to hurt people. It believes in violence. So let's make this green, because it's like a good guy. And then this will detonate onto that, and the explosive force will counteract this. Right. So this. This explosion will be going this way, and this explosion will be going this way, and they'll counter each other. They'll counter each other out. So that's, you know, that's that. 
then that's why it's got two. Because <laughs> the first one hits the ERA and the second one explodes inside the tank. Um, and then, you know, that obviously makes, um, makes the man inside the tank very, very unhappy. Uh, he's actually going to be entirely red this time. Uh, and yeah, he's having a he's having a terrible time, just a terrible time. He was like, I spent all that money on ERA, and they just brought a double rocket. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. It's a double rocket. So there you go. I've explained tandems. Where were we? <laughs> I think we're still on the inf tab. <laughs> so I'm also bringing them in the BMD four, which I can para drop. It's all about that para dropping. I'm bringing some Iglers. In this game, the Iglers only carry three. And that's a big problem, because it'll fire all three, and the enemy will pop flares, so they won't do anything, and then you'll run out. So the fact that they only carry three is a bit weird, and I would love an option to carry some more. What is this? Verba. That carries six. Can it be airdropped? question mark it it cannot be airdropped it's even in the game yesterday it's just a question mark so it can't be airdropped so it, it's not going to be useful for me so yeah I'm going to bring a, a few more of these because last time sort of got a bit miffed probably don't need as many dush that allows us to bring more iglers some, uh, and some scratch it's so this is, this is uh, it's got iglers on it and it's also got a gun. So it's like a BMD2 chassis. It can be airdropped. Uh, and you can have it with just the gun. You can have it with the gun with some sort of radar sight on it. Well, it's, it can't be a radar sight because it doesn't get the radar tag. Some sort of upgraded sight. Or you can have it with the upgraded sight and the Iglus. So I get it with the, all that because then it'll be mega against air. But you're basically paying twice the cost. So it might be worth not bringing that. Next we got the Cornet. This is like an upgraded Conkers. And you can get the Cornet M, which is apparently better. But, you know, you're spending all this money on extra missiles. Actually, it's only 10 points more. <laughs> it's pretty funny how they hold them. It's only 10 points more. Um, spending all this money on extra missiles and... Just get, get one or less of these. This will be defeated by active protection systems, which are in this game. We've not got to that yet. This will be defeated by active protection systems, just like the other one. And so, yeah, this is what I mean about the comparisons not being easy. 1600 meters. 1600 meters. Accuracy 100%. Everything has accuracy 100%. It's just the ECM on the other side. So that when the guy pops flares, that's when your accuracy starts going down. It is a bit weird, because that means that more sophisticated guidance systems have the same amount of accuracy, which is a bit odd. Uh, but that puts a funny strat in the game, which means that, you know, if you're spamming the most upgraded ATGMs and the enemy's got active protection, he's going to destroy them all. But if you mix in a bunch of cheap ones and you fire all the cheap ones first, well, then you're going to get him. Um, so, damage 12, pen 1,000. Damage 13, pen 1200. So yeah, I will bring that. Why not? And we can still bring... Uh, that. No. There we go. Metis squad. You'll know this from Warno. It's a standard squad with a Metis, but they also have a HMG. So that's the cards. That's that big one at the back there. Um, so that's like a PKP, but... Uh, but more than 50 cal and they also bring the metis but once again only three missiles no option to upgrade would be nice if they had like ammo carrier and they've got one less rifle and three more rounds that would be a cool upgrade i would buy that so that's that uh and it's also going to be you know i've also brought the bmd 4m again for that i guess because of the way transports are shared doesn't really matter motor strauki this is just my ground base units and i'm bringing them in the boomerang which is like um Ooh, what is that? So it adds a Carnet. It adds a Carnet and a 30 mil. So that's what I thought I was getting anyway. <laughs> so 
So that's interesting. I thought that's what I was getting, but I wasn't. Um, just bring one, two less of these. No, I'm still having the same problem. Still having the same problem. There we go. So now I'm bringing this with the the. So it's 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 basically a BTR80, right? But newer, I think. I think that's the idea. It's like an upgraded BTR80. It's got Carnets on it, or BTR90, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's the upgrade, and you can uprammer it, and you can also put active protection systems on it. Um, but if I try that, I'm not going to be able to buy any of them. The whole point behind this was kind of that these are just spammy infantry. And if I start making the transport really expensive, I've not really accomplished my goal. So I'm actually going to remove this and remove that. Uh, but it is the fastest. Because th this is obviously like track tracks. So it's not going to be as good. This Barbaris thing is pretty good. It's like an anti-infantry tank. You can put a... Um, yeah, 57 millimeter on it. <laughs> That's pretty good, but we're not going to bring that today. Um, but yeah, I've got points spare, so I can buy some more of these again. There we go. Save in case it crashes. Other tabs, vehicle tab. So the idea behind so the, the Armata is really expensive and not very good, is basically what I've found. If you compare it to the American one, the M1A2 SEP V3, it's just not very good. But you see that it brings multiple smoke rounds, it brings an ATGM. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so expensive for how for what it does uh, that actually, do I want to bring it? Because look at the armor, right? What is that? Heat armor, kinetic armor. 1400, 1300. You know 120 yeah so you might be like well hey hippie more armor bro it's like twice the price 150 points more for a tiny bit more armor like what um and the gun is is the same it reloads one second faster so i'm actually gonna get rid of this because it's not, i just don't think it's very good the t90m is just better uh, well i mean for the price for the price, the T90M is just way more efficient. And the, the strat I was trying to build with this deck was to buy an Armata and then, you know, because now I'm also an Armata Division as well as so the BDV Division, as we spoke about. Buy an Armata and then have all the cheap spammy tanks protect it. But, um, yeah, because the Armata is not very good, I think I'm just going to spam T90Ms. But then do they, ha they do have Arena which is the APS, and they have ERA, which are those blocks we spoke about. But when I put that on, now it's 400 points. <laughs> now it's 340. So, cause, and then that's got, this has the APS by default. But what am I paying 60 points for? Because the gun is the, oh no, hang on. So this is the, the penetrator, pen 500 to 1000, damage 6. Pen, 450 to 900, damage 6. Dispersion, 3.8 to 4.6. That's like the accuracy, I guess. That's the same. 1,400 meters, 1,400 meters. What's the rate of fire? Oh, yeah, the reload time's better on the Armata. Okay, so for the sake of 60 points, I might as well bring the Armata. So we're back to where we started. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is, bring the Armatas, uh, which ain't cheap. Oh, fling on it. And then... Supporting the Armata will be a veritable spam of um, t just base T90s. So they've got ECM apparently, which is those eye sockets on the front. That's ECM. Um, but then how much... What's the cheapest APS I can get? It's probably this for 210. Drozd. But it's only got two APS. So what's APS? Uh, basically... I have to get paint up again, aren't I? I ever gonna play this game? I'm just gonna sit in the lobby all day. So, Adidas tracksuit man has encountered his greatest opponent yet, uh, which is 
you know, so he's running around with his uh, with his rocket, and um, man in tank has a new stratagem. <laughs> He's got a new stratagem, and it's called APS. Uh, it's called APS. Gonna get to it. Don't worry. Don't worry, bros. So, man in tank, he's pretty clued in now, and all these shenanigans that keep happening. And he's got a little... Uh, he's basically just got, like, a gun on the top of his tank. Right? This is basically how it works. And... Um, what this does is uh, uh, it shoots. It shoots. Bang. No, hang on. Um, it, it it basically shoots a bullet at the thing that's coming for it. It it actually shoots like twenty bullets because it doesn't know where it's going to hit. You know, it doesn't know if it's going to hit. It needs to maximize its hit potential. Um, and so it just it just fires these. We're going to make them green like last time, because that's the protection system. So this is the meta. And it just fires these little bullets all over the place, right? So what it does is it detects the um, the incoming round, and it just fires all these bullets at it. And then um, the guy in the tank, Johnny IDF, he's, uh, he's feeling pretty good now, because he's fine. Uh, because the gun on the outside of the tank has shot the charge. Um, and that's how it works in this game. But he's only got so many rounds. So you might think he's having a good time, right? But he's only got so many rounds. And that's what's represented in this game. The gun's only got so many bullets to fire at these incoming shells. Just like missile defense systems on a boat, right? You can only fire so many counter missiles. So if... Um, if Tracksuit Man <laughs> decides to shoot four rockets, then, uh, then he's going to get through, right? Um, can't really rotate him, but you get the point. Um, if the guy's only got three rounds in his gun, then he's going to get through, and um, and so Tankman's going to be a bit less happy than he was a couple seconds ago. So this is sort of the the arms race between arms and armor, and this has been going on for basically since the first tank was invented by Britain in World War One. The uh, they were like, oh, it's armored. There's nothing we can do. And so they um, they started distributing like better bullet uh, armor penetrating rounds to people, which would break through it. So they made the armor thicker, so that didn't work anymore. Um, so they started firing artillery at them. <laughs> so they made the tanks a bit faster, so that didn't work anymore. Um, so they started getting even bigger bullets. They started getting their own rocket launchers, and and you know it just keeps going. This is the, the constant state of escalation. So that's APS. So yeah, that's basically so yeah, that's basically the idea. Um, Armata that does the heavy lifting, backed up by a bunch of cheap stuff. The Spro SD is like the gun of the tank, so it's got the gun. It's got the gun. It's got the ATGM, so it's got none of the armor. So I think that's the idea. What's the SDM? What am I getting here? It's got a. A better loader. It's got what for? Oh yeah, the rounds that it brings are better. So actually, instead of bringing the T, well, but then for fifty more points you can get an actual tank. Do you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't think the Sprut's worth it because you just can't take a hit. <laughs> Look at the armor, whereas this can take a, a, quite a few hits. It's actually got comparative armor, so yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Terminator, this thing's like... Um, uh, it's, you can put grenade launchers on it. It doesn't get those by default. And it's got like double auto cannons. I put ERA on it. It's basically an anti-infantry beast. And it's also got uh, ATGMs on it. Lots of armor. No APS, which is a shame. But yeah, that's your anti-infantry tank. It's got uh, two auto cannons, two grenade launchers, because I added those, some machine guns, and it shred shreds infantry. So I'm going to bring one of those with the tank blob if I can. Save, yes. Supply tab, support tab. So support contains the artillery, 
Strela 10M can be dropped out of a plane. So that can be good. Supply carrier. Fairly straightforward. Nona's. I got them because they can be dropped. But in hindsight, not very useful. Just don't have the range. And I usually end up not dropping them because you don't really want your hobbits on the front lines anyway. And it doesn't have direct fire capability in this, which is a bit odd. Oh, it does when you get the SM. No, it doesn't. Those are laser guided rounds. So I'm going to swap that out this game. And instead I'm just going to bring this, which looks like the upgraded Acacia, <laughs> I guess. Extended cluster rounds. You can fire cluster instead of HE. What is this firing? This is firing HE. So I'll get this to fire the cluster. Yeah, extended range. Oh, the Krasnopol. This is the uh, the laser guided rounds. I don't really understand how those work, so I'm just not going to do that. So yeah, we're going to get one of the... Oh. That's expensive. Uh, I used the burrito in the live stream, so I don't really need the burrito. Uh, but I'll bring one anyway. <laughs> and yeah helicopters we're in the helicopter tab now um this is you can do all sorts with the helicopters so this is like the the most expensive helicopter it's got um additional pylons over the other one k52 is like half the price though but doesn't carry as many things it can carry some iglers, but only two iglers. So that's a pain. Although this is... how many? So this is just a hind. How many iglers can this carry? Four. And you can add ECM. So yeah, there's lots of customization, lots of customization, and one has to wonder how much difference it all really makes. So far, I've just sort of been maxing out almost everything, and that seems to do me well. So, yeah, I'm going to bring um, four AA and eight ATGMs, and I'm going to have the upgraded optics. And so far, this has been serving me very well. It's been serving me very well. Could theoretically bring this, because um, I've got the points to spare. Uh, but will I ever buy it? Who knows? And... Yeah, instead of putting rockets on it, I'm just going to put guns on it. Like, loads of guns. But you can't do that. Uh, I've got 80 points before I go over. Oh my god, we're back in! We're back in! We're back in! I don't have time for this. Um, we'll have to do the rest of the deck build later. I need to play the bloody game. Hippies lobby. I'm just going to make my own. Uh, because I'm not going to fall for that from last time. I press that on Russian. It's not changed. It's changed. DVD. Great. So we're finally in the game. And we can continue to look at the armory while we're in the game. But I don't actually know if the, the lobby's going to fill up. Do you see what I mean? But hey, it is a beta. You should expect these things in a beta. I just wish I hadn't taken the time off uni. Uh, I'm doing a full-time PhD if you're new to the channel. Final year, so very busy. And I took a couple days off to play this, and the servers are broken, so that was really silly of me. Um, but yeah, there's nobody here. And if I join another lobby, who knows if it's going to work? Because uh, here we go, we got people coming in now. I'm not going to kick him. Uh, I just realised that when I showed the. Uh, Oh man, I made a big mistake when I showed the the tandem stuff. I don't think it actually appeared on the recording. I was just looking at the... That's a shame. Um, might have to cut that part out. Depends how good my editing skills are. But this is the tandem warhead stuff. This is the tandem warhead stuff. So you see that the gun shoots the, the projectile. But if you've got multiple projectiles, the gun gets overwhelmed. So it's just like boat combat, right? With missiles and stuff. So the way this works is people need to join your lobby to fill up your team and then you press search and it matches you against somebody else who's searching. It's a bit odd that there's no option to also fill up the enemy team. <laughs> I feel like for, you know, for tournaments, for example, some guys were trying to organize a tournament for this. 
that's simply not possible because you can't fill up the enemy team. You can only fill up your team then press search and it will auto match you. Which is obviously not going to work because... Um, because, because, because... Uh, there's going to be other people searching. Right, so we see that five people are searching right now, which means another lobby's managed to fill up. Uh, I think it's important. I mean, you can check the timestamps and just skip to the game. A lot of people do that. I know this from my channel statistics that a lot of people just skip to the... Well, maybe I can show you for a video. Right, these guys are leaving now. I think the servers are breaking again because it's going down instead of up. But I can show you the average watch time and stuff from my videos. And I can... Uh, tell you about the engagement and yeah so this is the usual game so this was me versus Ranbone on Warno if you're just a broken arrow enthusiast Warno's like broken arrow except a lot closer to being a finished game <laughs> and this is the audience retention chart so you see how it spikes up that's people spiking up when it's the game I'm gonna press launch now oh and then that guy left so you see how it's right and I'm gonna press launch not all players are ready. What the fuck? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. What? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm the host. I'm not doing it. <laughs> what the shit? That's not me. That's a problem with the lobby. Didn't happen yesterday, not seen this particular bug before, but I can't select my deck, and it just keeps changing the, uh... Right. I think it's him. Because he everybody else is a changing. No. Right. This is, this is a bug lobby, I guess. I I'm not sure. So, that, so last time it wasn't that guy doing that, it was just somebody else. I'm just going to leave this lobby and make another one. And no doubt I will lose connection in the meantime. And now I can't make a lobby. <sighs> oh no, I'm in. But I can't select my team. I can still hear the ping sounds from when the things were changing in that last game. But that wasn't me. I do wonder if, but I'm the host, but if, if anybody else can press it, then it might have been somebody else was just pressing that because he didn't know what to press and he just broke it. But hey, we're back in a lobby now. And we'll wait for this one to fill up. So we'll talk about audience retention. So this will be like the deployment, right? Oh, you can see at the top, intro and deployment. And people just skip it and they just all skip straight to the game. So I do wonder like how much of this to keep in, how much of this to leave out. Because obviously, that so if people are skipping parts of your video, it recommends your video to fewer people. But then some people have told me that the videos are useful. Um, while we're waiting for this to fill up, we could talk about the rest of the deck. So this is an S three hundred, sadly no S four hundred, and you can change the you can change it to only have two missiles if you want. Um, we've got one guy. He's readied up. Um, and yeah, you can change it to have less missiles. The chat doesn't work. This is the grad. You can have HE, incendiary, or cluster. I've only tried the... I've not tried any so far. Probably no point bringing the burrito if I've got the, uh, the other stuff, but... Yeah, so I'll get rid of that because we've got the grads. They do the same thing. Get two of these now. And yeah, we're just waiting for players while we uh, keep looking at the deck. You can also bring the Tor. I do wonder if it works in this. In Warno, obviously, it doesn't work properly. You can change the weapons to 16 missiles. So are they smaller missiles or... Uh, I'm, looking, I'm just looking at the stats. No, they're the, somehow they've just managed to fit in more of the same. In the same amount of space. That is odd. 
Got two people in our lobby, bros. That guy left. Probably going to try and join another lobby. Power to him. I've got time. I'm still finishing my deck build. Isn't this a fun game? Oh, I didn't speak about the aircraft. <laughs> Probably the most important part of the strategy. Um, basically, this is this is too big for the hangar. It's got a gun on the back. You can just about see it. There it is. This is uh, what they put the prisoners of war in. Gets shot down. And this is what your guys paratroop out of. So if you don't bring this, you can't do any paratrooping. And then I've got one SU-57 for... Um, I wanted it for air superiority. And then I changed something on it and it wasn't for air superiority anymore. But I need air superiority. So it's got seed. And it's got four... Whoops. Oh, yikes. It's got seed and it's got four AA missiles. Two infrared and two... Uh, good. 